Hello everyone and I hope you are doing well. Well, it's been a long time since I made a video, sorry about that. Now, today's video is also a bit different. It's going to address students who are willing or going to pass the PhD contest. Uh, I think they are soon or soon going to be announced. Now, also today's video, I'm not going to provide like a specific lecture. In fact, I'm going to try to share my experience in this respect. I will try to talk about three points, not in the sense of linear way, but maybe I will overlap. So the first problem I'm going to talk about is what kind of problems really students face when they start revising and what kind of issues I do believe it's very important or they are very important for students to know about. And number two, I'm going to talk about my experience as a lecturer, as someone who has been providing courses. I have, I have really been engaged in providing courses, some paid courses, some free courses. We, are, we had meetings on the site concerning this respect. And I want to share my experience with the students that I have, I have, I have encountered these years, at least, at least the last three years. And the last thing I'm going to talk about, I'm trying to provide pieces of advice for students so they can really start uh starts confidently revising for this lecture or sorry for this uh, exams so let's start first about the major problem that i really believe that students face so i do believe that one of the problem that usually students come with it all the time is writing style it's not the language or the level of structure but the way they write exactly this is really uh Let's say, for example, it's a problem. It's a hardwired issue because when a student come, comes to me and tell me that I want to uh, revise for this lecture, the first thing I usually do, I give him or her questions to answer. And then I assess their introductions, their essays, how they write. The problem usually is in the style of writing, the rhetoric exactly. So even when they usually they can do well with the structure of the language, they don't have any problem with the grammar, they usually end up with really serious problem when it comes to writing itself. And this can you can really see when it comes to writing an introduction. This is why I usually say, for example, for every student that the first thing they need to do is to really master writing introduction. Why introduction specifically? Because of a simply the problem that when it comes to a question, the, you find yourself writing an introduction in a unique way, not like, for example, the development. Usually when you develop an idea, you provide definitions, you provide arguments, and these are arguments you have, you have studied or you have memorized, but it's not the same case when it comes to an introduction. The introduction is uniquely tied to the question, and here comes the problem. So your writing style really is going to to shine when it comes to an introduction at the introduction level. And this is where I you tell students you need to spend most of your time writing, writing and writing introductions. Now let's say, for example, one of the problems that I saw students face. They come to me, I tell them write an introduction. What they do, they they start writing something. I'm not going to tell you what that, what's that thing. And then they reformulate the, the question again at the end of the introduction and they just want to start. So, Bismillah, uh, it's the, the first, introduction, first paragraph, which is not the case. I mean, at the level of introduction, you should see everything. If you check, for example, a good of writing, I do, I'm going to share a link of, for a very good book of writing. You will you find that an introduction should comprise of what? We have an introduction, usually you start with a very general team or the team that's related to that subject you are going to answer. Then you have the thesis statement, which is truly the answer. I mean, if you are asked, for example, to provide a set of characteristics, these characteristics should be defined at the level of introduction, not defined, should be mentioned. Then you will have a kind of a plan, development plan. Development plan usually is something implicit. For example, if you talk about characteristics, let's say, for example, I'm going to define something, then I'm talking about the characteristics. For example, let's say, for example, you've been asked about the role of the teacher in this era, and you will say, for example, he's a facilitator or she a facilitator, uh, someone a supporter. So if you start with the facilitator, we expect that the first paragraph should be about facilitator. That's called a plan. That's this, it's, so the same plan is reflected in the development. Then, of course, 
after this, you will have kind of development. Now, the developments are simply what? They are each paragraph. I should find a topic sentence, like from paragraph one, a topic sentence that is related to the introduction. You may have heard before that the last thing we write is the introduction, right? especially when you could talk about assessment, and simply because of this. So when you develop, like, for example, three ideas, the whole the three ideas should be mentioned at the level of introduction. Of course, when it comes to an exam, you can't do that because that will be a problem. This is where a revision comes. If you have to revise and prepare for all these beforehand. So that's usually the problem that I face. Now, the problem with writing, like at the level of structure, some students, they really come to me and they find, I really find the level is really weak to the point that I say, you really need to revise writing first, practice writing. I'm not saying they are not going to succeed. They can succeed by memorization, by sheer luck, of course. But usually those students who really possess knowledge, they know how to connect ideas. They know the interconnection of elements. So these students, they are too smart. I mean, at the level of introduction, they really amaze. So when the question is, answer, is answered, you find in that answer, like an uh, amazing way of thinking. That's critical thinking, something that is really good. These students usually really do good at, at these uh, kind of exams or even exams at university. And this is something what you should really do. Now, this is concerning the problem. Now, of course, I'm going to talk about the courses I provide. Now, the courses I provide, usually, usually I try to share my experience with the students. I tell them how I write. I tell them my way of thinking. I try to help them to see, uh, to see really how knowledge fits all together. And this is something usually helps, really helps my students, not all of them, of course, but because as you can see, I mean, the rate of success in this exam is so difficult. I'm not saying that nobody won in my groups. I had, I think, two, and even I was contacted by some students. They said the videos helped them or the course really helped them so much. But I, at the end, I mean, if someone comes for these kind of courses, because these are advanced writing, they usually they don't come for writing skills. They come for the knowledge, how they, they put everything together, how they can construct a very good introduction. That's why I really said, even at the beginning of my course of the condition, I said, I'm not going to teach you writing style, writing. You need to go back and try to write again and again. So this is something concerning the courses I provide. Now let's talk about the pieces of advice. Now, the first thing I would tell, and this piece of advice, of course, is not for the one for the ones that are going to pass this year. It's actually for the ones that are studying a master one or master two. From now, try really, really to master your writing through skills. Try to move beyond just writing. You need to really understand all the elements you are studying. For example, if you are studying didactic civilization, you need to understand everything. And you need now, from now, you need kind of revision. For example, every essay you are writing now, preparing for your exam, first, term exam, first semester exam, Keep those essays and try to think that you are revising for for the PhD exam, not now, for of course, of those who are interested. And for those who are supposed to have this exam this year, I don't, still there, are, there is no announcement. So I do think that we still kind, kind of have a month. So in this month, you can do a lot, but only if you don't sleep. I mean, you need really to write like several essays, not several, like a lot. So yeah, at least 10, 20, I do believe like 40 essays would be good, would be good. You need really to master all, or at least, like, let me say, it's kind of, you try to predict all kinds of questions and you write introduction for that's the introductions, that's one side. And of course you have to memorize, usually I say memorize, the concepts, definitions, characteristics, quotes, because those you need them, that you really need them. Yes, the, the question can be different. The questions can be different. They can be unique in the way they, they ask you for a piece of information or to combine pieces of information together. But at the end, yes, at the level of introduction, you need to write your own words. But when it comes to development, usually it's not the case. You only are going to advance arguments, counter arguments, concepts, definitions. That's what you do. So this is the easy part. This is why sometimes I say that 
for example, if you find in these contests, 500 students, most of these 500, some they have, re they have really did good job concerning memorization. But when it comes to their freestyle writing, they really face a problem. And that's because they did not practice at all. And here also I go to my second piece of advice. If you are going to these kind of exams and you have never really taken your pen and wrote something, trust me, this is very difficult. We need, a lot, we need a lot of practice. You need to take your pen, you need to write, you need to work on your handwriting, you need to work on your spelling mistakes because at this, the level of this exam, spelling mistakes are not accepted. Are, they are really not accepted. And they are usually the first way to eliminate a student. Because let me tell you something about these exams. When you, when you are at the university level, when you are at university or in a university in exam, a regular exam, Usually as a teacher, I'm talking about me personally, I try to find ways to help the students to achieve at least an average. So I try to find whether he has uh, any kind of knowledge about the concept I have uh, advanced you know, during my classes. But that in the, the regular exams, in the PhD context, it's a kind of competition. We need to eliminate students. Students are eliminated because of the smallest mistake. Since we want, we want, we want only four students to succeed, means that we have to eliminate eliminate hundred, usually 300, 400 students to be eliminated. For this, any small mistake is a problem. And of course, you are competing with the best student, like the best of the best students. And here, you have to take that into consideration. You need really to be a very good student. Now let me talk about another point, which is motivation. Some students, they start really demotivated, thinking that no, I'm not going to succeed, I'm revised. And this is one of the reasons that it's really lead them to stop. Well, that's a problem. I don't want you to stop because if everyone stops, it means no one is going to pass that exam. That's not the case. Usually they pass and they win. So think about it that I should try, first try. The first attempt, trust me, Usually, you will see how easy that exam. Really, the first attempt, you will see that it's so easy. Then you will blame yourself that you did not succeed because it was so easy. And you may say that, okay, this question I could have done better. Now, there is also the, the, the other side, this is the overconfidence. Overconfidence is also a problem. Some, some believe that, okay, I'm writing good essays. I'm going to prepare them. I'm going to memorize them. Then there is that word, I'm not going to share them with anyone. But this is the problem also, is you have written something that you are not sure whether it's good or not. Some students, they really try to uh, share. For example, I have been sent, uh, even now, students send me their essays, tell me, can you evaluate their essays? Some I find so good, some I find many problems, some I don't have time even to revise. But what I want you to do is I want you to write. You balance between your confidence and your overconfidence. Overconfidence is also good because it pushes you to succeed. This is something good about it, but as long as you really manage your skills and you know that your skills are sufficient, that you can succeed with. This is what I'm going to uh, tell you. Of course, I am still providing courses. I just have finished. I think I will finish soon with one group and I'm going to start another group maybe. There will be always announcements on my Facebook page. And if you have any comments and if you will have any ideas, please share with me in the comment section that this video will be in the Facebook and Facebook and also will be in my uh, YouTube page. So thank you so much. And for those who are willing to pass, I would say uh, best of luck, inshallah. And uh, thank you. Goodbye.